Man, yeah, it's been a long, crazy ride. I mean, I don't feel like it's been that long, but when I think about how many years, that's a lot of years. I've been fighting for, what, I think 13 or 14 years now, which is crazy to think about. I don't feel old. Um, yeah, I'm 32, so it's a lot of fights in a decent amount of time. But yeah, I went, before the Ultimate Fighter even, I was fighting locally here. And there were times I fought twice in two weeks, you know, just back to back. That was back when promoters didn't care. Nobody signed you to these, like, no 30 days before, no 60 days before the event. You could just take fights everywhere, and I fought all over the place. And then started going to Canada. It was my first international fight. I was signed to a promotion called MFC that's not around anymore on HDNet fights. So I got some international experience. Um, and after that, I think, yeah, I think after that was when I went on top and then started the whole UFC ride, got to travel all over the world. Um, a lot of crazy memories, you know, things I'll never forget. It was a lot of fun. Now, outside of the UFC, it gets even crazier. It's like the Wild West, you know, going and fighting in Russia, um, the kickboxing stuff. But I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun. I always said before I was done, I wanted to kickbox and maybe even box. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I just like fighting. I thought about the bare knuckle stuff before. Um, you just to say you did jujitsu. Yeah, I did a pro jiu-jitsu match. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm just seeing where it takes me and having fun traveling the world and getting paid to fight people and that sounds like an see different life places. On that side of things. Yeah, I mean, it can be amazing as long as you win. Uh, there's some downsides to it, but yeah, so far it's, it's been fun. I mean, I would say that there's, there's very few that are out there that maybe fall exactly within this category, but you're pretty much universally loved. You're held in very high regard from all of your peers across the board. What do you think is attributed to that? Uh, I think just be nice to people. <laughs> you know, uh, I think Mark actually mentioned it. Like, when I was in the UFC, you know, I, I knew all the staff, talked to everybody. I never, like, big league people or anything. I'm, I don't know, I'm just a normal guy. So I get along with just about anybody. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just always happy, so I think that that wears off on people. And even though I talk a lot of shit here in the gym, the guys, uh, they know I like them. Yeah. I don't talk shit to people I don't like. It's a sign of, or it's a term of endearment, right? Yeah. It's, you know, some banter of endearment. There. <laughs> now, let's, let's kind of rewinding into with this. When you were on Tough, you were, it seemed like, at least from the viewer's perspective, and we've never actually talked about this in all the time we've been around, but I just have always thought about this you were kind of almost being fast-tracked to being like the star of that season. You had a lot of camera time, at least what they put within the, you know, within the episodes for those first couple before you had the jaw fracture that eliminated you from competition. Yeah. So how do you think that that, you know, kind of affected maybe the trajectory of things? Well, I went in there with a goal. So my, my former manager, um, a guy named Jason Janae, who was real smart on it. He had a lot of guys go through tough. He told me every chance you get, um, so this could be some good advice for guys going on the show because I think they're revamping the show. Um, when I coached with Stipe and then we told him the same thing. Every chance you get when they ask for an interview because the producers would come in and be like, anybody want to do an interview? Whatever. My, my manager was like, make sure when they ask, you constantly say yes. Give them as much footage as you can. Like Make yourself known on there. And uh, So my whole goal was every time they asked, I'm like, yeah, I'm in, I'm in. I got something to say. Even if I didn't really have anything to say, you're also looking for an excuse just to kind of get out of the house, go out front, do an interview or whatever. Um, have something to say, and then my other goal is to not go on there and be a jackass. So, you know, my mom watches the show, uh, my family. I didn't want to portray myself as some drunken idiot. And uh, it was serious to me. You know, I already had a decent career before going on there, so I wasn't one of the, like, 2-0 and I, two and o guys that want to be, like, the, the tough guys. And right. I think there's two... There's two different kinds of people that go on the show. There's guys that want to be reality show stars, and there's guys that actually want to be fighters. So you can kind of see as the season goes, like, it splits. You can tell the guys that are just there to say they were on TV and the guys that are there to make a career. So I wanted to be one of the guys that was there to make a career. I mean, well put. Like I yeah. said, I, I just, I've wondered that all along and just, you know, a crazy turn of events because you were still practicing for that matter. You were still drilling and everything. Was at, at least how, that's how they showed it on the show. Yeah. And then Danny came in and said, you know, we've got a guy who has an injury and is going to have to go. 
Is that exactly how it went, or was that kind of, you know, played up a little bit for the show? Or what, no. What did that exactly look like? I'll give Tough some credit, at least from my experiences. They don't... I didn't ever see them, like, feeding drama or anything like that. It was more... They know the personalities to pick. Um, most of it seemed... I mean, I think all of it was real as far as... I wasn't there very long. I was there about a week total, but... Yeah, I mean, we still had practice the very next day, so we fought to get in the house. I broke my jaw. I won the fight, so I got to go to the house. And uh, it was kind of crazy, so... I don't know how many times I've even talked about this. Probably not too many, but... We thought I had broken a tooth or something, is what the, the doctor initially thought in the fight from getting hit. So he took me to the dentist. They had it x-rayed. And um, the dentist was like, yeah, one of your, one of your teeth is broke. I don't know. It was a dentist in Vegas. I don't think he works for the UFC or anything. Um, when your teeth is broken, we're gonna have to pull it, and then the pain will stop. And I'm thinking like, all right, pull the tooth. You know, we're getting ready to pull the pull the tooth. And Dr. Davidson, who works for the UFC, comes into the office. I'm sitting in the chair, like waiting for them to pull this tooth out. And Dr. Davis uh, Davidson comes in, and he was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. And he shows the dentist an X-ray, and he's like, it's not his tooth. His jaw's broken right here looked pretty clear when I saw the x-ray he was like right here his jaw's broken it's not a tooth so I ended up leaving with him and the producers and uh, he was like do you know how bad that would have hurt to have him pull a healthy tooth with uh, you know especially with a broken jaw yeah so that's when I found out my jaw was broken I didn't know what was going to happen yet um, so I go back to practice where everybody's there and then Dana comes in and was like everybody get together I thought they were doing the fight announcements they didn't tell me I was going home and uh this was, what, the 11th season, so I guess I should have expected it. But I didn't know how bad it was broken. And um, originally, so I kind of got ahead of myself. Before that, we thought I was going to get picked to fight because I was injured. Most of the guys knew that it was hurting. I couldn't eat, you know, so my weight was stealing real low. I was just drinking protein shakes and, like, eating fruit. Easy stuff to, like, swallow and mush up in your mouth. And Tito was like, all right, well, if they pick you, I've got an idea. I've got a guy in Vegas. <laughs> that will shoot you up with Novocaine. So we had this plan that, that we were going to shoot my mouth up with Novocaine so that I could fight. And I, that's what I thought the fight announcement was when Dana came in, and I was like, I'm for sure getting picked. And uh, that was when he told me I had to go home, and it was a real rush after that. Right after the cameras cut, they took me to the hotel. They didn't go back to the house. They took me to a hotel, and that was the last I ever saw those guys for that show. Um, they sent a producer to go bag up all my stuff and they brought me all my stuff that I brought in a big plastic bag And we were just like here you go in the hotel. They gave me some spending money for the night and then flew home It's kind of crazy how that all just wrapped up that fast then. Yeah, yeah, it was like a whirlwind, you know I didn't like I said I didn't even get to go back get any of my stuff I said bye to the guys at the training center and didn't get to talk very much. They're like we gotta go. We gotta go so but obviously within that short amount of time though your impression was felt being that you were still in the end you ended up you know you ended up in dents yeah so I didn't know I came home healed up I think it took like six weeks um, my jaw didn't get wired shut because I was already almost two weeks in by the time a uh, week and a half two weeks in I got home the doctor was like listen you got two options I can wire your mouth shut or you can promise not to chew anything for five more weeks five or four weeks, something like that. And uh, I was like, oh, God, if I have the choice, don't wire my mouth shut. That terrifies me. Yeah. Um, so I just didn't chew anything for the most part, you know. I ate a lot of pancakes and stuff like that. And uh, once I was able to start training again, the show was going. Um, and I didn't know if I was going to be on the finale. We kind of thought my opportunity was gone, maybe have to do it again. And then I got a call one day to be on the finale, so it, I was super ecstatic you know the whole time they didn't give me any information like yeah we're gonna try to bring him on the finale nothing so as far as I knew I was out and uh, I ended up working out and then had a decent career in the UFC and a lot of fun